Alrighty, sausage prep day. It is balls cold out here. Um, high of like 30 today, tomorrow's gonna be colder. That's really unusual for South Texas. They're even predicting snow next week, but so that's just to give you an idea of how cold it is. We're out here this morning loading up all the things we need for sausage. And uh, we got a new grinder we've got to unpack. We're gonna take it up, set it up. I'll give you guys a quick rundown on what everything does and uh, should be good to go from there. New toy time. My dad bought a new grinder. It's supposed to be the shit. It's supposed to be able to grind meat like nobody's business. So we're gonna crack it open, take a look. Wow, it comes with two knives, two plates, three plates because there's a plate on it. Yeah, look at that. What sizes do we got? Looks like two are the same size. One's like a chili grind almost. This is, yeah, nothing for like a hamburger grind, but that's fine. But that's a big, that's a big blade. Yep. We don't know what it's going to do, how sharp the blades are, but we're going to give it a shot tomorrow. Good thing is that, oh, it pulls out. We're easy clean and it's got a bearing. It's got double bearings in there. This thing looks pretty, pretty badass. You'll see our other grinders. I've made all of our grinders and motorized them all. Uh, some of them are pretty Yankee. <laughs> so, uh, no offense to, you know, Yankees. <laughs> but it, it, uh, this ought to be, this ought to be an improvement. I'll show you guys some of our other grinders later. They're old timey grinders. You know, they're, they're our forefathers grinders. My dad just hooked up motors to them all, so. They're jury rigged and the whole nine yards, but they've been working for like 30 years. Um, so if this one works pretty well, I'll throw a link in the description for you guys. It's looking pretty promising though. It's got all the right parts. It looks high quality. All the important parts look high quality from what we can tell. The sheet metal and stuff on the top, we don't care that much about that. That's just awesome in here. <laughs> More defrosting than you all right guys so that's all the meat we have here at the house there's more like i said last weekend we've got a couple families that put in for the sausage so there's more but this meat's already been out for you know 12 hours and you can see here like this shit it's got it's still frosty that's how cold it is out here so we're gonna load it up on a cart take it in the house and that way it has a chance to defrost because otherwise it's gonna be rough rough tomorrow getting this all mixed together and ground up and everything else so all righty guys we're all loaded up we're gonna head up to uh comal county all righty we're up here at the ranch we made it um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna unload all this stuff. We're basically gonna set everything up so that tomorrow morning when we get up here, we can just start mixing meat, seasoning, and then go gr straight to grinding. So once we get everything set up, I'll walk you guys like machine by machine and show you what we're using here.
All right, we caught a problem. This is why we came out here today on Friday instead of Saturday to get all this stuff troubleshot and make sure it was in good work and order. So when we stored this thing, something fell on this belt and made it too loose. So now what we've got to do is just tighten it up a little bit. out of there this is run on a hinge and how we keep it tight is we run these screws down and it'll suck that belt tight but I put a little piece of plywood underneath there just to wherever I need it on the wedge all right I'm ready to roll all right so this is one of our grinders here and actually I've got another project over here on this grinder so we actually grind three times the meat and so this is like a chili grind right here and uh, what we want to change it to is like this big wheel. And then we have like a hamburger meat grind as well. So this is basically second grind. We need to put first grind on it. Come on over there. And as you can see, there's a knife in there. This is the knife that as it slides over that hole, yeah, that's what cuts it for people that never seen this. Good to go. So you guys will see this thing in action tomorrow, but basically this, you know, th these grinders are dangerous. You don't want to, you know, put your hand in there because they're not like those uh, at home food processors they sell nowadays. These are like the old timey ones made out of cast iron. And so, you know, you don't want to mess around with the meat once you put it in there. So we make these little stompers so you can sort of stomp that meat in there. You even have to be careful with this one. You can see it's been nicked up and stuff too. But yeah, basically big grind which is like the chili grind. And then we got grind number two and that's still not fine enough. So we go all the way down to grind number three, which is basically hamburger grind. And that's what we actually end up stuffing uh, the sausage with. And here you can see we've got another stomper right here um, for this grind. But yeah, these were like old grinders that, uh, well, not this one, not so much, but this one here. And then we've got another one on the table that's getting retired this year because we got that big one. But these are like old, old grinders that like granddaddy used to make sausage with. And so we just sort of modernized them, manufactured a little bit of a mechanical hookup here. And so we've got a speed controller and a motor on this one. This one's belt driven right here. And so it just rips it up. You know, sometimes these can get stuck. I don't anticipate the same problem for this big, big monster over here. Okay, these grinders, uh, we call them F Dicks. That's what the brand name of them. This one here is so old, I'm not 100% sure. It is, you can see it right here, F Dick. Uh, this thing we bought used, actually got it last year, uh, and these things work great. They're better than the old cast iron ones that uh, Matt will show a picture of it in the, in the description. Uh, they leak a lot and they're just hard to turn. These things have two gears on them. And this one holds about 30 pounds of meat in this in this tube. Uh, and you fill it up and then you set it on there. You slide your casings on and you'll see it tomorrow uh, in action. Uh, but it's a two speed deal. So you can use change your gear on it and one's fast and one is slow. So this puts all your pressure to where you're not pushing so hard. But when you get ready to go back up, if you switch it, it'll go right back up a lot faster. See how fast it goes up? So this, this thing's a Cadillac and we can really run through some sausage with this thing. Yeah, so it used to be we only had one of these and it's a, it's a bit smaller of a gr uh, stuffer, so it'll take us a long time. And then last year I found this on Craigslist and we paid pretty good money for it. We paid like $1,600, but that's basically nothing compared to compared to what they're worth brand new. And we tried looking, we looked for years for an F-Dick and it just so happened 
The week before we made sausage last year, I found that one on Craigslist and we snapped it up right away. Also, don't be afraid to use a cast iron one. I mean, if you have the old cast iron ones, they're a little slower and a little bit more work to them. But if you're trying to get into sausage making, that's a good, easy way to get started. Just find yourself a stuffer. Um, I know Cabela's sells, sells one that only holds like 10 pounds of meat. And so those are good ways to go too. Um, it's just, if you start scaling up your production, you're gonna want something a little faster that you can put more meat into. You don't have to spend so much time reloading it. You can spend a lot more time cranking it out. All righty guys, last thing I wanna show you here on setup day is this little wash station over here for my mom. She's the one that volunteers to do dishes. So we've got this double basin sink. We don't really use that last one. We got her a pressure washer as well because when you got, get all that dried meat, um, it just tends to be real real nasty. Um, we use these to haul the meat around. I'll show you that guys that tomorrow. And then we've got these big cast iron like antique pots. And uh, these were like my great granddad's. Now my dad has them. And uh, what we do is we just fill these up with water um, because we use so much hot water that it's hard to, for the water heater to keep up. So we just constantly fill these throughout the day. Used to be when I was a kid, what we do is make schwadamaken in there. And basically what that is, is you put all your bones and you just boil them all day. And then you sit around, pick the meat off of them and then you stuff that. Well, we got to where we, it was just too much of a pain to butcher the, to actually butcher the deer on sausage day. So these kind of got converted. Um, so they're wash basins now and they boil water all day long. And my mom uses that to wash the dishes. And that'll be the last thing we set up today. And then tomorrow, get ready, because it'll be just a busy day. I don't know how long that video is gonna be. It's probably gonna be an hour long video. Uh, might try to split that up, but otherwise we will see you then.